Hi, so I'm going to be talking about the routine MPI all to all, which is extremely useful for shuffling data amongst some set of processes. So I, I have a diagram set up for the case where we have four processes. And uh, suppose that um, on each process we have some array of, say, double precision floating point numbers. And to make things more concrete, let's suppose that uh, process 0, 1, 2, and 3 each have 64 um, floating point numbers in their buffer. So um, A0 might be 16 floating point numbers, A1 would also be 16, etc. And so each of these different um, uh, subvectors is different on each process in general. So the idea is that after we call this routine MPI all to all, the ith um, subset on the jth process will end up in the jth subset of the ith process. So for instance, um, A3 sits on process 0 and after MPI all to all, it's going to be in the zeroth portion of process 3's buffer. So in some sense you can think of this operation as performing a sort of transposition of the way the data is arranged. Um, so I think that might be clear if you sort of look at uh, the way that the data starts and the way the data ends. So this is um, nice for several reasons. One, this operation is actually its own inverse. So you'll notice if you call MPI all to all on this data, it will produce this output. If you then call the same routine again on this output, it'll produce the original input. So the routine is its own inverse. Okay, so the set of arguments to MPI all to all are pretty simple and probably what you expect if you've seen other MPI routines. The, the main thing that's a little tricky is this send count argument. Now, if, for instance, this buffer was of length 64, and so A0, A1, A2, and A3 were each of length 16, then the send count is 16, not 64. So the send count is the size of the message that you send to each other process. Um, so the arguments are fairly straightforward. You have um, a pointer to the buffer for your input data on each process, and then you have a pointer to your buffer for your received data. Um, so for each of those buffers, you need to specify what the send count and the receive count were, um, and then what the data type was, of course. Um, so in the case we just described, the send count and the receive count would both be 16, and then the send type and the receive type might be MPI double. Okay, and then of course when we do any sort of collective communication routine, we need to tell MPI which processes are participating in this uh, operation, and this is represented through what's called a communicator. Now, um, I'm not going to go into what a communicator is right now, but if you don't know what it is, then you should just use MPI com world, which is always defined and it represents the entire set of processes that you launched your job with. 